Master Flash and the Furious Five lit a fire under me at a age 19 or 20 or something. But as I was being inspired by music since childhood uh, and influenced by life around me from childhood, I had no idea that it was going to end up in, a, in my own art form. The 80s, oddly enough, were a very prolific time for funk music. There was all kinds of weird hybrid funk going on from uh, defunct to, you know, early hip hop, uh, Sugar Hill Gang and the Commodores. There were all these weird, funky bands that um, touched me in a way, but I wasn't thinking, ooh, I want to be a funk guy or I want to be a musician. I was just hanging out. And then uh, in high school, punk rock kind of came to the USA. And I was like, okay, this is in fact the future. I was just looking at it. You know, sometimes when you're, especially when you're young, you can kind of get your finger up inside the pulse of the musical womb. And yeah, like I said, I wasn't thinking, oh, I, I need to learn about this because one day I'm going to be able to apply it. Like I said, I wasn't studying to be a musician, but all of my friends were. And by proximity, I was exposed to their musical journeys. And then I, something when I heard Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, I was like, hmm, I think I might be able to do this. Grandmaster Flash was was gave me the green light like it was so arousing to me that vocal style you know just talking about your street life and your 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 people and that when uh, it finally got suggested you know why don't you let anthony try a song and everybody that was already playing music and why would we let him try a song he doesn't he's not a musician well just maybe he's got something to say and so they kind of agreed, they conceded, they capitulated, they bowed down to the suggestion, and, uh, and that's what started our band. At the beginning of all writing and creative processes, the band in a room together jamming. Beautiful things happen, and when they do, I try to capture them and <clears throat> remember this is something I want to put vocals on. Chad play something from James Brown, you know, circa 1965. And, and just keep playing that over and over, and then flee if you get an idea, jump in. <laughs> The thing for me is it, I have to write my part really fast because we're in the studio recording a record and they'll give me what they did that day and say, okay, go home and come back tomorrow with a great song. So the pressure cooker is on, but I don't mind that because I'm a procrastinator to, by nature and it's, I'd rather write the song on the way to the studio than have a month to go think about it. I know you want the whole one, not on strike, but I'm about to bow one, fight that mic. I know you never stole one, girls that like the story, so I told one. So good, mean line, cashback, hot top, Shannon. 
waiting in line to see the show tonight And there's a light on, heavy glow By the way I tried to say I'd be I'm I'm not prejudiced when it comes to inspiration. Like sometimes the more obvious pools of inspiration it don't interest me. It's like I love my son more than anything on earth. I'm not going to write a song about him. Yeah, pain is a better source of inspiration. Suffering is a better source of inspiration. Um, difficulty is a better source of inspiration. Those kind of emotions tend to come out. appreciative and feel blessed to have been present to channel that song um, but I try not to think about it too much because I'm, I'm trying to move forward and, and you know rec- have that happen again some days I love fashion but I'm not in love with corporate fashion I can't subscribe to the <clears throat> Gucci 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 just like who cares it's like so you got a lot of money you can buy some expensive stuff that is not passionate or creative or interesting that's anyone can do it I, I like seeing people that have their own style their own expression and it's not about how much money they have that they can afford the expensive stuff it's amazing when you see someone step out and you're like wow they look amazing and who would have thought of that fashion is, is just another art form a Hyde Park was a, a monumental run for us because we played three days in a row. <clears throat> um, it was also monumental because we got to play with James Brown. So that was yeah. in the summertime and he died on Christmas Eve. I woke up and found out he was gone and it hit me like a ton of bricks. <clears throat> and I cried my eyes out. He was on another level as, as a musician, as a human being, as a, some, his experience was just next level. So I sat there and listened and tried to take it all in. Yeah, he was like, um, he had transcended. Even his, his glow, his aura, his skin, it was otherworldly. We came in the 70s. Everything was different at that time. It was less gentrified, less homogenized, less branded. It was more about, let's just go have fun. And people weren't, you know, they didn't have such a, a preconceived outcome of what they were going for. Let's just do it right now and see what happens. The scene has certainly changed, but thank God. If it stayed the same, it would be pretty boring. I don't think the creative... Um, spirit ever goes away i think it just keeps morphing and transmogrifying into something different and new and the clubs change people are are forever going to want to tinker with music whether it's electronic music or rock music or whatever it is i don't think that's ever going to go away it's just going to keep finding a new home The first time I ever heard us on commercial radio, I was downtown, I turned it up, I rolled my windows down just to make sure the world could share this moment with me. I still get a kick out of hearing our music on the radio. We were just going with the moment. We weren't thinking about branding or imaging or anything at all other than just being outrageous and having fun and leaving a mark 